Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome to another Supreme Commander epic with a little bit of an average Joe's flavour in today's game. Apologies, no cast last week. Um, those of you who like the Facebook page will have seen me twining, and I was twining about having an issues getting uh, replays to work. Lots of people have sent me replays. If you sent me a replay uh, that's from a few weeks back or before, I'm basically not going to be able to view it. I had a bit of a backlog and they basically stopped working with the latest patch patch uh, uh, on from I forget what the number is but what the latest patch the replays seem to work but before that they're not working for me or the vast majority of them uh, aren't uh, and so I was just desperately desperately trawling trying to get hold of something that I thought was viable and it wasn't working but never mind I found one I believe today as we said it sets and I hope you guys appreciate it because uh, you know what? I'm supposed to be having a new desk chair. It's very exciting. New desk chair delivered today, and the FedEx guy's probably going to arrive while I'm casting, and so it's going to not get delivered. And I, I, it's a big deal for me. You can hear the, the squeakiness. I've been on this thing forever. The, arm, the sponge on the armrests has completely gone. And for, like, why would you design a chair so that when the sponge has gone, it has spikes, like spiky nails? It's like I'm getting a tetanus shot. Like, every single time I put my arm on the arm, and instead of, like, getting vaccinated against tetanus, I'm getting tetanus, because God knows what's under here. It's absolutely horrible. But that's, I'm very excited about my new chair, and I'm potentially putting that on the line, not getting that today, just to bring you this goodness, so I hope it's appreciated. Anyway, that's enough waffle. As we said, sentence clutch, average Joe's. Haven't listed it in the scrolling bar as average Joe's, but it essentially is. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. A cha-ching? Ka-ching. Is there anything more exciting than the image of that? You know what we're in store for here today. Let's check out our teams. We'll call this Team 1 up here at the top. This Team 2 down here at the bottom. Going first for Team 1 rear guard air position. It's the Ghost 12. 92 in electric blue. He's going A on how utterly sensible for an air player. Opening first land. <clears throat> to the cliffs down here. Our first Cybran of the day. In mellow yellow, it's Ore. He's going first air. Going to get that early transport and side island off the bat ASAP. Uh, team member number three for team one. It's Turbo 2 up at the front going uh, Aeon as well. Interesting in Burgundy Red opening first and second land. And last but not least for team one in Baby Blue this time. Our first UEF today. It's Storm. And he is going first land. <clears throat> Let's take a look at team two. Rearguard air position first of all in Harley Borange Orange going UEF. It's Hey Buddy opening first land over to the cliffs up here in combat green it's lind another a on a lot of a on representation today going first air for those early transports uh, team member number three for team one already on his way to the middle now an elephantine gray going uef very sensible for the causeway player it's orand or orand and he's going first land. And last but not least, over at the beach in Cyanide Scion, yet another Aeon. It's Durant. Or is it, what did you say? Durante? Durant? I'm going to call him Durant, but it's probably wrong. Anyway, here he is. And he's going first land, second land, third land, land all day, it would seem. So there we have it. So. For Team 1, we've got two Aeon, a Cybrin, and a UEF. For Team 2, we've got two. Aeon and 2 UEF. Game quality at 90%. Not too shabby. Not quite what we've been used to calling a balanced game here at Garcast, but it's near enough as to make little or no difference. Highest rated player and our only pro of today is the Causeway player for Team 1, Turbo 2. He's at 1,900. Everybody else is at Joe level right there. We've got a couple of 1,400s on Team 2. Lind and Orround, uh, so that's the Causeway player there, 1400, and Lind over at the Cliffs. Hey Buddy is uh, up at the back at 1200, their air rated player against 1100 for Team 1, the Ghost, and Storm 1100. And then we've got a couple of mere 800s there, Oray and Durant facing off in the bottom pond against each other. So they really tried to match up the skill rating as much as possible but this is going to be the one to watch this is the biggest mismatch on 
show here today, Turbo 2, that 1900 versus Orand on uh, just a comparatively paltry 1400, though still way above my own personal abilities. These guys move towards the center and start hoovering up the mass. I like this. Might be low-rated players there, but Ore getting out the early air scout and the interceptor going straight for the potential defense in case uh, uh, Durant gets any early ideas about trying to snag that side island there, getting in that early transport. So he's on full consolidated mode there, consolidation mode, trying to make sure he grabs that side island as these guys battle to hoover up the most mass. They seem to be selecting the same wrecks to begin with. Aron taking a bit of fire there from an Aurora that's turned up to assist Turbo 2's comp. Second Aurora comes in to join the party. Aurora, uh, sorry, Aron, sorry, has uh, lost about 800 HP on the comms so far. A couple of Lobos showing up. They're going to lob some shells down onto Turbo, and that's going to dramatically decrease his HP if uh, he stands there for much longer absorbing those, but he doesn't. He hoovers up a little bit of mass from that central Salem wreck and then gets moving. Moves on to engage the two Lobos, and both of them, well, initially both of them escape. One of them gets blapped a little later on. That other one's surviving temporarily, at least with five hit points on board. Lots of Lobos coming in now. Turbo 2 taking a bit of a battering down to 8,300 HP now. Taking a look at who's doing better on the uh, reclaim side of things. Turbo 2 on 3.8k so far and Rond on 4.3. So small advantage here for Team 2's UEF Causeway player as he's now advancing on trying to tidy up some of this Aurora span that's giving him grief right now. Remember you can play it a little bit faster and looser with the early Causeway play. You've got the water either side which you can retreat to. Only thing is, is you could potentially miss out on lots of bonus reclaim mass for your team. Zooming out, we can see a couple of T1 bombers circling around there for Hey Buddy. Successful drop at the side island for Ore over in the east. Those interceptors weren't needed in the end. It wasn't uh, essential for him to pump those out, but better safe than sorry. Lots of engineers... Meanwhile, in the bottom pond there for Durant, spamming up lots of T1 naval yards. Western side island firmly under the control there of Lin. So no surprises on side island possession. Arond not too far away from going into the red here. He's going to dip into the bottom pond down below 4,000 there as he takes a bomb square in the face from the ghost. He will get under the water to safety, leaving potentially all of this mass now for Turbo 2 to scoop. He's up to 5.7k versus 5.2k now for Ron. Jumps back out of the water temporarily to take some pot shots at this ever increasingly large band of Auroras now. Growing in size over time pretty steadily. Ron deep into the red probably wants to think twice about Doing too much more of that skirmishing. <coughs> Incidentally, you probably hearing my voice. Not on form today. But uh, when has that not been the case in the last five years or so? Counter push on the causeway from Arond and his spam. And he's engaged from Lind. Shoot down that T1 bomber from the Ghost and gun damage range Zef amp upgrade on the way for a Rond. I want to think about a T2 upgrade. Expensive as it would be, it would replenish his HP, and that is what Turbo 2 is going for. Get some HP back on board the chassis of that com, and also allow him to throw down some point defense, some flak, and lock this whole area down. 11% done there. Zef amp up to 17. If we look at generated eco between these two, this is where the main fight is at the moment. 45 mass per tick for Turbo 2 and Rond on just 27. This is going to be really difficult 
for a rom to contend with. You can see the more expensive engineering suite catching up. The Zef amp upgrade there. Might have been reclaim related. Turbo 2 dropping back down to 27. It probably was. A rond on 27. 27, 29. So there's actually not very much in it. Having said that, this whole mass field falling in towards his ownership now as his T1 span continues to advance further south down the causeway. He's got some relief now from Durant, who's turned up with some frigates. Range just about enough to engage everything on this side, but they're not going to hang about and take any counterfire. Lots of floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty, of course, on the causeway. Nothing to stop those auroras from going en masse into the bottom pond, so he's just playing it a little bit carefully, understandably. T2 upgrade on the way, meanwhile, for Storm. 74.5% complete there. We're up to T2 tech in the air game for the Ghost, and he's on his way to T3. 24% done on the upgrade there for that HQ. Not a huge amount going in on an array's base. 92% and climbing. Nearly done on that T2 upgrade. That really is going to help Team 1 lock down the causeway. Potentially secure control of these two mexes in the dead center of the map. <clears throat> T2 upgrade down here on the way for Durant. 25% done there. Going straight for a T2P plant before uh, too long once that's finished. Lots of T1 naval yards going up. Three groups of four. The next one up there. Lucky number 13. Why not? It's always worked out so well for people in the past. And a rond goes straight on to a T2 upgrade, as we said, would have helped replenish his health. Missed opportunity potentially from the Ghost. He's not to know he was going straight for a second upgrade, but he could have gone straight for some torpedo bomber harassment. Gone for an early snipe attempt. Inti's inbound for Storm over the top of Lin's base. Pretty strong air force right there that's going to protect this aerial incursion that's inbound. There's the drop-off point where it's right there, right at the edge of the cliff, so these guys should make comfortable landfall. There they go. It's a Lobo-centric drop, at least from the first one. Second one, different mix with some mobile anti-air and some tanks. <coughs> Engineers go straight into a Raptor production, but that's going to be tough against a pure... Lobo drop. Lin needs to bring his ACU to bear, and he does. Lobo's unnecessarily drifting forward into range. They're not actually going to get that much done. A couple of T1 power plants down, few engineers, but nothing too terrible. Manages to damage that T2 mech, but that will survive for 200 hit points. And the drop that drifted over here disappeared or got shot down. Looks like it got shot down. You can see the tank wrecks in amongst each other and the transport there. Aron didn't complete the T2 engineering suite. Rapidly moving towards that second rank in veterancy though. That'll help him recover a little bit of health but he's very, very low. This is dicey play here from Aron. Gets that rank in vet back up to 3,700. Turbo 2 continuing to press however. Senses Aron is in a tight spot. And that's where he's going to lay down his first T2 PD. Has he got enough time to get it online? That will grab a significant amount of territory on the causeway if he can get that operational. Next up after that will be a T1 PD sensible decision. 
Oblivion mm -hmm. turret opens up straight on the comm of Orond. Takes him back into the red. Gets another ranking bet though, back up to 6,200. Orond holding fast here. Takes down the T1 PD. Doesn't want to yield this much territory and I can totally understand why. Turbo holding his ground as well. Starts another Oblivion turret back here. Aron, very dicey play here. 3,000 hit points still absorbing Oblivion turret fire. This is playing fast and loose with his life right here. And his own tanks are in the way of his own retreat. Probably wants to back up as he goes down to 300 hit points. God. Whoa. Very close indeed, but I think he's safe. Barring any last minute air attack. Yep, he's out of there. 600 hit points and climbing. And now Turbo finds himself running out of spam completely. One Oblivion turret back here. But this whole position is just getting overrun now. And the Ghost is making a shocker. So he's going to try and pick off Arond who's in full retreat. He's on a 1100 HP. Turbo heading backwards, starts work on a T1 PD. Will he be able to finish it? Strikers engaging it. Yes, he does finish. It's not going to last long, though. There's too many tanks around here. Where's that bomber? The ASFs fly overhead to clear a path. Presumably, it's on the way. There it is, heading southwesterly, almost directly down the causeway. But hey, buddy has shown up with his own ASFs and picks those off transport in to help evac Arond transferred over to his control Shocker not advancing anymore it lies in wait for more ASFs to come and help clear the skies ASFs takes one quick pot shot at the alumna doesn't manage to shoot it down but while the other ASFs are distracting boom baby Shocker comes in over the top and picks off Arond unfortunate for team two hey buddy bought the bait went straight in on that solo ASFs and did not cover the approach from the strap bomber and team two find themselves down a player causeway control transferred over to Lind and we'll see how he fares against turbo two who's now rolling off with fresh troops down the causeway. T2 capable. Blazes tearing a hole in that northerly formation of strikers. Turbo 2's taken a bit of a battering as well. One quick ambassador from Hey Buddy would repay the favor, but it doesn't look like it's on the cards. Aron telling a buddy to snipe Turbo, saying he's almost dead, and he really is, but he's got some shield coverage up and running now. Lind came in over the top with a bunch of T1 bombers, but it's uh, not going to do a huge amount now that he's shielded. Seekers online in the water down here. Already covering the skies, doing a pretty good job of tidying up these bombers. And they're only halfway through that first shield, and that second one's about to complete and blink on. There it goes. And it's going straight for a third one. This is going to be nearly impossible nut to crack now for Team 2. Probably best not to throw any more resources at it. <coughs> Spectre gunship lurking ill-advisedly halfway down the causeway there for the ghost. Gets Popped by hey, Bud hey Buddy's ASFs. Checking in on the bottom pond. What's going on down here? A few subs, T1 and T2, belonging to Durant. Maybe more than the match for this frigate fleet from Oray. There is one sub lurking in this mix. But that is it. As it happens, no engagement there. We've actually lost three 
of those 13 naval yards. So there's been some engagement while we've been focusing in on the causeway action. Power issues there for Turbo 2 as he tries to complete personal shield, give himself just that little bit of extra coverage. He needs to get his power production sorted out ASAP. About to complete that T2P gem, working on another that ought to do it. Engineers inbound now from Storm, heading down the causeway. Looking like it's going to drop off up front, give himself a little bit of extra defensive capabilities for uh, assisting Turbo. <coughs> Excuse me. Buddy completes T2 upgrade on the commander. Engineers, are they just on reclaim duty? Potentially. There's a lot of mass to be had here. There's a pretty substantial mass field 17 minutes in, but then we've had a lot of early combat. Wow, that's pretty uh, aggressive looking. Turbo not looking like he's too happy about those engineers scooping the mass. A little bit of ground fire there. <laughs> it's always nice to see teamwork. This is interesting. T2 fleet from Lind. Coming in down here, those destroyers easily in range of everything on the causeway from this side. Torpedo bombers from Hey Buddy engaging those frigates from Bore. of being Aeon means Turbo 2 can just move his T1 and T2 spam out of range of those destroyers and move them back into range because why not going for the engage here looks like it off, forces the withdraw from Turbo 2 before re-engaging. Standard skirmishing tactics from both players. Planes out from Hey Buddy. Trying to get a gander at what's going on over the top of Storm's base. Gets a good look, but they all get tidied up pretty quickly from the Ghost's Air Force. T1 push from Lind. We haven't got a lot of ground defences online under this shield barrier so he's engaging with what forces he's got which isn't an awful lot could be about to lose this shield coverage here why they're not focusing on the shields I don't know there goes the second one really should have been able to bag all three of those Can't come in straight with the naval vessels as we've got T2 Company up here now from Storm. Massive, comprehensive air scout in progress there. 
getting full vision of everything coming down this side of the map. Ambassadors inbound. Going after Turbo. They have managed to kill off that shield gen. Turbo 2 still safe for the time being. Drops back just a little bit. You can see right back on the hobby horse with erecting a new defensive position. But through all of this, he hasn't managed to gain and secure control of the center of the causeway. Team 2 doing a pretty good job of forcing him back. And now we've got a series of clink hammer batteries going up under shield coverage over here for Lind. That's going to give him really significant range. It's going to be hard to advance on that position once all those are up. Burgeoning fleets on both sides now in the bottom pond. Though I have to say, although there's a lot of T1 spam in this mix as well, it seems like Durant might have the more efficient economy. He's on 105 there, or raise on 73. I know he's got a lot more production capacity with all of these naval yards. We've got five T2 naval yards now. Cyber and T1 fleet getting pretty mashed now. Gauging against superior T2. Hey, buddy, getting involved in the naval game as well. Drops off a whole bunch of engineers not too far away from where that battle's happening. Starts work on a naval facility of his own. And uh, speaking of that, Turbo 2 has also set up a pretty solid naval factory, naval production yard up here. Up to T2. Another one on its way to T2. Another couple on their way to T2. Lots of engineers. So this is going to become a very interesting conflict zone, this bottom pond. It's going to be 2v2 before too long. Turbo 2 just moving what is a pretty heavy ascendant blob sending it across the, the pond now to join Ore's ships give him some coverage from the air <clears throat> probably wants to get some more PD in the mix here he has actually got a lovely little PD battery slightly further back behind the click hammers. It's going to have two Ravagers online. We've already got four, sorry, three Ravagers online. We've got four or five Triads online. That's a nasty looking firebase Lind is setting up there on the front line. Lind's at 408. Remember, he's sitting on two economies essentially after inheriting Orons. 408. It's not too bad. Turbo 2's on 269. And the other cliff player on the other side's Auray is still on 73. But I think it's fair to say Auray feeling a little bit out of his depth here in this game. Not producing a whole lot, not echoing a whole lot. It's fortunate he's got assistance in this bottom pond now from Turbo. I think he's going to need it. Just get that, that feeling. Uh, 
just shifting east, staying with Ore's fleet, getting some distance between him and those Exodus class destroyers from Turbo. Back up on the causeway, we've got an Omen class battleship out from Lind, and that is going to spell trouble for Turbo, who's already started moving his comm out of that forward position and he's scheduled to move it all the way back to his main base. Can Storm push Lind off this position and help Turbo keep his forward base intact? Certainly going to give it a go. He's got those bulwark shield boats to assist him. The range of that battleship Coupled with those cruisers, always pretty scary stuff. Geron could actually push directly east here and take out pretty much everything over here on the side island. I'm wondering if that's what he's planning. Down goes the Salem in that mix for Ore. Nothing of consequence left in that flotilla. Turbo chasing with his destroyers. I think Geron's going to have to redirect and engage those, maybe, before pushing onto the side island. A couple of cruisers in here as well. There in range, that's going to help. If they can actually hit anything of consequence, should really be focusing on those ascendants. Little Corsair party turning up from Oray. What are they going after? Presumably the destroyers. There are cruisers here now, though. Is he going to get a second run? Uh, nope. Pass is all he got. Back up to the top pond. We've now got a summit in play. I can see the uh, shells flying overhead. There it is. So one battleship apiece. Nope. 2 1. We've got two omens down here for Linz now. As these guys getting involved in a pretty serious conflict. West of the causeway. Shield boats helping storm out, but no. how much longer they're going to last going to be many destroyers left in this mix soon. Those Vespers causing all kinds of problems as well from beneath the waves. Now we've got a battleship out for Turbo who's transitioned to T3 Navy. <laughs> and that does change the dynamic. Look at that. All the tech virtually gone from Durant. Naval forces up here. He did manage to pick off three or the three naval yards of 4 8. Turbo heading backwards. Wisely trying to retain his naval advantage. But here comes Hey Buddy with some storks, torpedo bombers going in after the more vulnerable targets of the destroyers rather than focusing on the battleships, which the second one has just shown up. There is the aerial response, there it is, the ghost rolling in now, transfers it over to Turbo's control, how very generous. At the request of Turbo 2 in chat there. And it's going to be very close. 
There's not going to be much left of either Air Force, I don't think. Turbo might just come out ahead. He's going to. Meanwhile, Stork's still doing their best down here, harassing Turbo's Navy. No, actually, it looks like Hey Buddy's managed to hold the field, and that's with all of these Ascendants lurking down here. Too many Ascendants showed up to defend the vessels down here, so the torpedo bombers had to bug out. That summit just getting pummeled. Three or four omens up here now. Just needs one or two more volleys. Oh, and then gets shield covered in just the right time. Shield boat turns up. Geron looking so strong previously on the naval side of things. Now very vulnerable as Turbo moves into range on his base down here. Geron's command is actually situated beneath this naval HQ that's now being engaged. This is big. That is the headquarters. That will be the end of any T2 naval vessels until he gets a new one. Cruiser rolls off just in time. Actually let you finish the thing you're building. Just wonder that. Yeah, looks like it. Assuming that actually lives as this one comes under fire, just as it's about to finish another vessel, but really what's it going to do against firepower of its magnitude? Far too much of it. Another wave of Storks inbound from Hey Buddy, taking fire immediately from all of these Ascendants, which are amassing in serious number now down here for Turbo. And I think that is the Ocean 1 down here for Durant. Turbo 2 turning his attention completely to the bottom pond. Well, it's one in the bottom ocean, but it might have given up his base and he's got a nuke launcher over here that's been destroyed now that hurts before it could get a missile completed and now all of these t3 reactors in danger of being destroyed we have got cruiser fire inbound up here one of the omens has gone down so turbo boy lucky assistance from storm his base won't be destroyed just yet. Geront moving inland with his commander. Seems to be safe for the time being, but his base is gone. All the core mass. Soon, all of his outlying mexes, I'm sure, will be destroyed. Ray, with what vessels he has, coming to help tidy up some of these shipyards down here. Taking fire from these three subs, but... I won't be too worried about that. Gaps in his uh, naval power filled easily by... Turbo's fleet, and look at this. Not only have we got destroyer pressure from down here, we've got Percy's from Lynn that have marched their way down the causeway and now are into the main base of Turbo. Turbo's comms back here. Just need to knock down these shield gens, start taking out some of these power plants. That really will hurt Turbo. Ow. Another one. Bites the dust. Oh, it takes a few shield gens with it. Turbo, are you power locked? Not yet, but there's a couple more reactors to go. Kill 
emergency power. There it goes, chain reaction, turbo. Not producing enough to get power locked as yet, feeding off his teammates. But this will hurt, there is no doubt. Fortunately for Team 1, they've already completed the conquest down here. Durant's not getting back into the bottom ocean anytime soon. Large broadsword air wing. Queuing up down here for Hey Buddy. T3 land headquarters under assault. Turbo 2 down to 106 mass per tick. That's quite the decline on where he was. You do need to just finish off. Oh my goodness. Finish off the T3 headquarters. Stop shooting the labs. They are a deliberate distraction. There we go. <laughs> Not many Percy's left, but they've more or less done the job that they were tasked to do. Horrible engage there for Lind. Brought his ASFs in to try and hit back at the Spectres, but just get munched by a combined pincer movement from Turbo's ASFs and the Ghosts. All originally, of course, the Ghosts. He's transferred control of a bunch of them over to Turbo. It really is the carrying force for Team 1. Oh, one of my favorite units in the game. An outrageous Aeon missile ship. So devastating. And base bombardment. But this would be concerning me a little bit if I was Lind. Approaching critical mass. Summit numbers now, under shield coverage. It's huge ranged capacity. Outrageous amounts of firepower. And that's how he's going to counter Tempest construction en masse underway in that top pond now for Lind who's got a whopping 590, scratch that 600 mass at current reading to call his own. Second place, actually, another Team 2 player. Hey, buddy, on 557. But Durant down to just 33 after having his base wiped off the face of the planet by Turbo. Omen's having some problems with a hill. Trying to get there firing solution on that base that's nestled in to the valley. Broadswords out to engage. Oh, there's a battleship right for the plucking there with just 8,000 HP. So much damage off those T3 gunships, and they get it. Will they get the second one? Where is Team 1's air presence? It's all the way up here. Surely they're going to get it. HP falling off that Omen class. The world's most functional Weight Watchers diet. That forward firebase that looked so nasty earlier on is just getting peppered now. Broadswords bug out as finally the ghost responds. They didn't even bag that second battleship kill. Hey buddy responds, but he's woefully outnumbered on ASF counts. Broadswords trying to escape, but it's not going to happen, surely. All of the a ASFs for Team 2 tied it up in pretty short time 
Broadswords head deeper into Team 2's territory. All control transferred over to Turbo. Makes sense, I guess, that he handles the air. He's won the bottom ocean. Might as well move that build capacity over to the top ocean and get to work assisting Storm against Lind. Lind about to have a pretty effective counter to all this. A massive ranged battleship. Complete first experimental of the game, I believe. Might have missed one, but look at that. Shield straight down. boats to begin with. Whoa, nearly takes out a summit. Shield blinked on just in time. But that forward base that looked so very chunky down and out. Had an SMD in there and everything. Just annihilated by Turbo's battleships down here. Swift Winds doing what they can for Geront. He tries to get re-established further back from the coast. Nuke launcher complete, working hurriedly towards its first missile. How far off the second tenth as well? Not long, and that is a lot of extra firepower. Just that spread, that artillery spread from those summits. Just beautiful. Dodosh. All of that fire, of course, landed on or landing on unshielded units. Way done on that third Tempest. The first one's taken a bit of a battering. Definitely want to thin out these shield boat numbers. That's what they want to be prioritizing. There we go. Sum it down, shield boat down. Definitely could do with turbo relocating look at what's going on down here though this is comprehensive turtle city going on from hey buddy interesting spread of energy storage all the way across the bottom of the map not sure what that's about but lots and lots of flares dotted around very spread out base making yourself as hard to kill unconsolidated as possible hello Mavor queued up right at the back there for Hey Buddy. 721 mass. Uh, they're all pumping out RAS preset support commanders now, so that's going to give them a real eco boost. Summit's being chased away now. It really does feel like the arrival of those Tempests was a tempo change. Here in the top pond. Almost 
worth considering submerging those Tempests and just taking them in with torpedo firepower. We've got virtually no torpedo capable vessels anymore. It's all cruisers and battleships which switch things up. You get in there, prioritize all the shield boats, take those down pretty quick. Monkey Lord produced by Ray, heading down the causeway. Could be interesting. Pretty solid ASF numbers on the field from Hey Buddy now. We're at 143. Let's compare that with Team 1, what we've got here. So the Ghost has 114. And uh, has he had those transfer back? No. So Turbo 2 still has a sizable amount. It's 110. So almost double the. Uh, the amount. Uh, one Tempest down. Strategic launch detected. Hello. So nuke out from Hey Buddy. And it's going straight after the fleet down here. Trying as best they can to thin this area out. Maybe allow Durant back to his main base going to be four battleships down at least, maybe five. No, just the three and one very badly damaged. Storm getting a kick out of this sea battle. to Lind, great duel. Certainly entertaining. But that's two Tempests down now. There's a lot of sunken omens. So much mass. So much mass. The first person to win this and get support commanders under the water down here. Just going to clean up in the quite literal sense. Too much build capacity have been pumped out there. A lot of redundant T1 NGs taking out the unit cat. I'm not going to bother him at the moment though, I'm sure. And the Mabel construction has started, albeit only just. We're about 120 hit points in. We've got triple shield coverage and a stealth gen around it. Has it been scouted? No, it hasn't. That is what team one are seeing right now a great big patch of nothing up there at the back closing in on 500 hit points fat boy under construction over here for hey buddy so he's going to carefully and methodically work on that Mabor. He's not abandoning everything else because he's got a lot of production going on everywhere else. His next uh, attempt to relieve pressure in the bay is a massive riptide push. He takes down that newly constructed T2 core mass there for Turbo. So many T1 frigates in here, these riptides coming in in single file, just going to get absolutely torn apart. Very unlikely any shift is going to be forced here. And here's Ore coming in with that Monkey Lord now we saw earlier. That will be a surprise. Riptides getting eviscerated as it stomps its way out of the waves. Lots of aerial coverage there. And look at that. Mass Control K ahead of inevitable destruction from this missile ship or these missile ships. Look at that. He's got five of the suckers 
up at the back there of his fleet. Turbo with extensive reach inland now. Indeed, he's got a support commando in there hoovering up mass as we speak. One of those sunken experimentals, but he's got another four Tempests complete. Say though, maybe go torpedo. Go on, torpedo on his ass. Sounds very wrong. <laughs> Major air battle brewing over here, and Turbo sat it out. He didn't engage, he didn't assist the ghost. Attention was elsewhere. And now he's massively outnumbered. And what was that? That was missile ships finally getting the better of Durant down here. He won't be too worried about that. He'll be glad of the relief. And with those ASFs down and out broadswords for Hey Buddy, free to lock on to that monkey lord that's not really in range of anything else important now. It's not going to make it. It's not going to make it. Gunships gonna swarm that experimental. That's an interesting change of pace there. Temporary air dominance potentially handed over. Well, I don't know. We've still got a lot of ASFs. Turbo bugged out, didn't fully commit. We've got a few more over here as well for the Ghost, who's producing more at quite the rate. That is a serious air facility. Back to the Mabel. How are we doing? Oh, 3,000 hit points of 8,000 done. Rover drones buzzing around it like honeybees. And that is the very definition of honey in Sopcom. Flaccid at the moment, of course, but when it extends, goodness gracious me. Let's hope it makes it to fruition. Not because I want any one team to win, but just because I like the sound it makes. Checking back in on some other very pleasing noises. Summit versus Tempest Clash still going strong in the top pond. Direction of travel has moved a little bit in favor of Lind, but not massively. Ghost with his own naval yards up and running up the back now has been pumping out submarines. And that's actually a pretty good call. It's covering the one angle that was looking bad for Storm. Although Storm has mixed up his production quite a lot, but look at it! Look at it! Were they all destroyers? They were all destroyers. That was insane! Just absolutely cataclysmic I think I messed myself a little bit Summit's tightly bunched not great for the area of effect weaponry on the Tempests Causing a lot of damage now. Another air engagement. Where is Turbo? Come on, get your ASFs involved. Turbo trying to get established on the beach down on Team 2 side of things. Locks on in to Hey Buddies. ASFs gets in behind them. That's the perfect engage. Stay with it, and he does, and knocks a lot of planes out of the sky. That's gone very well for Team 1, considering the way it started. Has to bug out, doesn't want to fly over those aircraft carriers with the brutal, brutal anti-air capabilities. Fat boy proceeding. Very slowly indeed, but hey buddy, 
has a lot of outlays. He's actually he's on 570. Is he power locked? No, he's not. He's got all the power in the bleeding world. 570 mass. Lind is on 649. Turbo's on 685. The Ghost's on 613. So actually, hey buddy, despite all of this territory, it's gone off the boil just a little bit eco-wise. Go look at those broadswords though. One pass over the top. It's going to cut the Ghost's newly positioned, not broadswords, sorry, stingers. Broadswords following in after a much smaller air wing. It's hard to tell. Look, the stingers are just exactly the same as the broadswords, just a bit smaller. Engage as well, going after the shield boats now. Covering Storm's fleet. They're not going to last very long. They've got no aerial coverage at all. In come the ASS from Turbo and Ghost. They're going to mop those up pretty quickly. That was probably not the best play. We killed maybe three or four. Already starting laser going all cybering on me can't say I'm a fan yep. telly the Mavor so it's been spotted they've got the scrying eye over it the Aeon spy spy That Mavor is nearly done, but look at all of those triads right by it. I heard someone mention Paragon, and that will be because there's a Paragon nearly up, so we're firmly into game ender territory. I can't believe I didn't spot that. It's right up here talking about the uh, teleporter lameness that's going on over here. We've got a Paragon. Completed. That will be target priority A1 for the Mavor when it completes. Assuming it does, we've very nearly got a functional tele snipe ready to go up here. There it is. Teleporter done. Microwave laser done. And there we go. Where is the gateway? going to be down here. Lots of engineering dro drones hurriedly building shields. The Mavor is complete. There's the gateway. That's where it's coming in. These triads will be ready to lock onto it. Where are all the T1PDs? Look at all those T1PDs queued up. Support Commander is going to be throwing those together very quickly. The Cybrin Com is going to arrive any minute now, but he's going to be doing it right next to a whole battery of point defense. It's locked onto the Mavor, but the Mavor's comprehensively shielded it's not taking any damage yet and oh my word that did not work out at all or fails on the tele snipe out he goes the mavor still looking pretty comfortable right now and will be opening up on its targets on the other side of the map meanwhile alumnas air dropping support commanders in from lin to help protect that sucker all the shields are down after the com bomb. And then they blink back on. Down he goes. And indeed, the target selection, unsurprisingly, is the para. There's quite a few shields around here, but the Mavor is so powerful. Take too long to chew through that. Back in the top pond. Tempests have backed off a little. And the stalemate seems to continue. And now Turbo is finally getting involved in the top pond. And he's going to lend some Tempest power of their own to... 
Storm's naval contingent. Fat boy finally completes, I'm guessing because the, the Mabel completed. That allowed it to go. Look at it. The mighty phallus of doom. Meanwhile, down goes the SMD that was protecting this particular portion of the map. Sure, there's... Ooh, no, that was not a result. Those are from nuke subs from Turbo in the bay. Where are they going? Ah, oh, they're going after the fleet over here. Would you look at that? I'm just going to keep an eye on these two things simultaneously because I just don't want to miss them. There's going to be a lot of dead vessels up here in just a moment. Paragon into the green still hasn't gone down yet. Lots of shields popping up here now. Oh, would you look at the tenacity of these battleships tanking those nukes from the submarines, shrugging them off even. So many hit points. Oh, would you look at that? It's very clever and actually quite annoying. That was me in Hey Buddy's base right now with the Mavor. That would upset me. Perfectly legitimate, quite sensible. Trying to block incoming shells with circling transports overhead. Quantum Gateway goes down. Lots of vulnerable support commanders as well. When they go pop, they can chain react. They've uh, been partially damaged already. Go back to single screen now. Lots and lots of shields and PD going up to protect that game ender. Oh, shield coverage around. It's down for the time being. Needs one shell to land. Anywhere, anytime. No, it's not going to happen. Oh, man. Just can't seem to break through. Ghost doing some fine work here, keeping us covered. Has some assistance from Storm as well. Commander's going pop over here. 55 minutes gone in this game, approaching the one hour mark. Still no discernible read on which way this is going to go. Team 1 have grabbed the bottom down here, locked down control of the beach. But they're behind in the game end of stakes. Still looking pretty even in the top pond, although a lovely little sub push there from the Ghost. Look at that going straight in on that T3 headquarters. Massive Vespa push, and they're going to get it. It's going to kill that battleship before it completes. And that's the end of any T3 naval production. New one set. Coordinates assigned over here to the other T3 naval yard. That's a painful loss right there for Lind. Nuke inbound. Oh, that experimental resource gen so nearly done. You can see the transports have been shot down. They've done their job or have been hit by collateral damage as the shells have impacted the shields either way they stopped the shells from taking out the paragon and that nuke didn't land either nuke was on its way to this portion of the map look at this these battleships just standing around waiting to get shot by this vespa fleet they really need some torpedo bombers or something you can see he's starting to produce some skimmers now down here, but there's so many ASFs lurking for the ghost. Look at this now. Accompanied by Turbo 2 and this horde of Tempests. I don't know how Lind is going to repel this. 
He's been crippled by this Vespa push down here. Paragon closing in on 400 hit points away from completion. No signs yet that that Mavor is going to break through. Spy planes for Lind out over on this side of things, potentially looking for SMDs maybe. There's two of them down here. No, one of them, sorry. That's a T2 PGM. Time to get my glasses prescription checked, I guess. This is looking bad for Team 2 and for Lind. No way to hit back against these Vespers, except in the skies. I spoke too soon. We have got those skimmers I talked about earlier. The Vesper fleet is decompiling. Did they get it? They got it! But it didn't go nuclear. What are they talking about? didn't go nuclear so I guess they knew it was going to happen and they reclaimed it stopped it going nuclear because all of this would be gone so that Mavor finally did it so where's it going for now is it going for the air production facilities of the ghost back here maybe so that's a huge, that is a huge advantage that Team 2 have now. If they can make it pay, but it's still, there's so much that needs destroying on Team One side of the map. It's unreal. Nuke inbound. This is going to hurt that fleet even more. Couple of Tempests go down at the same time, though going to be three dead omens maybe four four dead omens that tears a hole in that naval blockade for sure so much outrageous firepower all of those shield boats as well coming in to assist and just battleships dropping like flies this base that's popped up over here outrageous numbers of buzz kills trying to keep those missile ships and their weaponry out and vast clink hammer batteries as well trying to hit back at anything that might set up shop on the land here which is why turbo hasn't managed to get any major beachhead established But it really does look like he's about to shut Lind out of the top pond now. And that will be the most significant development, I think, in this game for about the last half an hour. That Mavor still online, of course. And they're working on a second. And it's half done. That really will tear through any defense. Got their own Aeon scrying tool up and running. Massive SMD protection. You ain't nuke in this site. Just overwhelmed. Vespa's still online under here doing damage. That really was a pretty clutch play from the Ghost bringing that. Wolfpack in, destroying Lin's ability to produce any more battleships, coupled with heavily shielded Tempest technology. And in comes a Tsar now, along with a whole bunch of strap bombers. They look like they're making a beeline for the Mavor. Hate to tell you, you're not breaking through. I don't think you are anyway. He's tried to cover with his ASFs. The ASFs of Hey Buddy 
shoot down the Tsar almost instantly. And with all of the flayers around down here, there's just too much aerial defense. Oh, a single bomb dropped, and that will be the end of Ghost's whopping air force as well, trying to get out of here against all of this mobile and static T3 anti-air plus, hey buddies, own ASFs. And they are now in behind them. They're going to chop them down to absolutely nothing. There goes another new cat of one of the submarines down here. ASF still in tow. The ghost dragging those behind it. That has gone badly wrong. Nuke out. That's going to get shot down, surely. There's so much SND down here. Or maybe not. Yeah, there it is. Two for the price of one, because why not? in here now what's going on they just started to try to rebuild no doesn't look like it a lot of zooming in and out guys I know apologies for that but there's so much going on on so many different areas of the map that some people absolutely can't stand over use of the strategic zoom and I do sympathize it's not great for uh, one's head ooh Emissary complete just as we scroll across it with about as many shields as one could possibly ask for. of shockers inbound hold out little hope that that's going to have any more impact than the first lot it's going right over a whole pile of redeemers it's just so much spread out t3 anti-air nothing is getting through outrageous amounts of T2 mass fabs everywhere and the main base of Lind is now just getting dismantled. Look at that. Major, major carnage. Strategic launch detected. Another new camp for the back of Hey Buddy's base. being dismantled piece by piece going after those new submarines oh, he's got sails overhead he's going after the emissary quite possibly there it is all the shields in the world aren't going to help you Gaboom! That fireball incinerates everything in its radius. Cheeky little rapid fire got spammed together. Now, where is that landing? Going after the main Mavor, the first one. We need to take care of that ASAP. They zeroed in on it. Isn't it nice that finally has experimental status? Isn't that nice? I've been calling for that for years. I heard about a year ago that they were going to do it. It's nice to see. Ugh, dirty. Novax operation underway. Seeing more and more of those online these days because they're much more useful than they used to be. Mavor's just tearing through that Salvation's Days 
are numbered shield gens from the support commander's personal shields holding up remarkably well to that outrageous fire. Zal, it's under construction, takes a direct hit. Managed to protect it just for a bit longer. Surely the next rounds will do it. Boom! <laughs> oh, it's a thing of beauty. That's got to feel good when you've been under so much pressure all game. You've lost the top pond. To take out their main weapon that they've got against you. To be carrying on to be able to hit them with impunity from the back of a very secure base right now. I don't know how Team 1 break in here. They certainly don't do it from the air. And it doesn't look like they're going to get much further with nuke spam either. Not with the amount of SMDs kicking around. On the ground would be one option. Probably not with T1 Aurora spam. We're going to be able to clear up these outlying undefended structures here. A couple of T3 mexes still need to be picked off for Lind. Got here, Megalith. Moving further south. So this is what they're going to be employing now. Smaller, cheaper, regular T3 static emplacements en masse further down the map on land that they've secured. There's not that many nuke launchers back here for Team 2, so they can't rely on that every time. Perhaps they're hoping that they'll have to continually redirect the Mavors to deal with them, and that will slow up the rate at their, which their own bases are destroyed. See, there's so much eco now. Look at the amount of support commanders. These are all RAS preset, so they are all producing. Forget exactly what it is, but we'll soon see. 11 mass each. Turbo has... 138 at 11 mass each which is why he's putting out 2.1k mass per tick that is, that is I mean it's essentially a paragon in name like just not in name only like that is a ridiculous eco he has going for him I'm actually wondering if he actually has a paragon somewhere and that is a, a sapping value because that's so insane but that is what you can do these late games. You've got to contend with a support command account. This is what's going to happen. A fully mobile eco of vast proportions. And now this build capacity is being airdropped off the uh, coast down here. This is make or break time, really. Feeling we're going to get some massive... Experimental incursion underway. That nuke got through nice and tidy. Interesting, both of the Mabels were actually transferred to Lin's control. I think so you can focus on other things. Another Mabel queued up down here, although nothing working on it as yet what caused that. Was that some of the newly constructed emissary fire from the middle of the map? Doesn't look like it. Looks like that has uh, been destroyed. <laughs> it's the nuke. Now what have we got going here? This will illuminate us as the, the next strategy Turbo is going to employ and it really is down to him now. He's the one with the, the monster eco and the build capacity. I mean, the ghost is on 929 as well. That's not too shabby. That's pretty damn impressive, especially when you consider Hey Buddy's on 603 and Lin down to 133. That is massive, but that is the scale of the task ahead of Team 2 now. That is what they're on. 736 team mass versus 3.6k team mass on Team 1.
absolutely outrageous. But those two Mavors, it's, you know, just bit by bit, going through things, chewing away, dismantling these bases, doing some flybys with spy planes, a bit of indiscriminate nuking going on, hoping commanders were lurking in that classic hiding spot down there in that pond, but alas, not to be. Good idea just to get a submersible unit and plonk it under there. Make them think that that's a com. Lots of gateways going pop here and there. Another salvation under construction over here. Desperately trying to get that up up and running. Not too far away either. 6,200 hit points out of 10,000. It does look like that's what the Mavors are now zeroing in on though. Ugh. Two shells blinks off virtually all of the shields. get on any more before the next one's come in. One more blinks on. Picks off another one. There's three or four or five that are about to blink on any second, but the next shells are due any minute. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, I don't think that salvation is going to complete somehow and this is what we've got to look forward to now mass gc production going on under the water just off the shoreline of durant's old base and that will be interesting that will be a real finale potentially to this game another mavor under construction now as we said that's coming up to one eighth complete no they're actually reclaiming it now they started work on it change their minds. The Y seems to be their only real way to hit back at them now and there goes that salvation along with a few support commanders. That threat's eliminated. Time to move on to the next. Just crying out for a shell or two down here. But it's interesting. I mean, it's... It, the Mavors, devastating though they are, when your economy becomes completely mobile with these RAS support commanders, your ability to affect damage is massively reduced with these artillery game-enders. really want his uh, Seraphim Experimental Missile Launcher. Uh, dirty old Novak's operational. Maybe that's what we saw taking down structures before. We saw them under construction. Just the one operational for the time being. Wonderful animation. One hour, 12 minutes gone, essentially. Really want to be focusing in on up here. Nothing of any worth up at the back here. and climbing now for Turbo. And with an eco like that, he can spam outrageous numbers of Colossus. He also has lots and lots of strategic missile submarines. We've seen them launch every now and again. He's got seven down there. Another two up there makes nine. We've got loaded in these suckers. Well, nothing as yet. It's 
that eco has been. Use that quite a lot. These two up here have a new geech in there. Support commanders around a gateway getting popped. Another gateway over here. It really is that is just the key to late game settings. Build gateways freaking everywhere and just have them pumping out support commanders. Unusual game this. Team 2 just hemmed in. There's no escape for them now. They're not going to break out. It's only 779 of 2k unit cap turbo. So he could afford a lot more units. Look at these point defense batteries, transcender batteries. So much turtle, it's unreal. Not a huge amount down here. I mean, we've got a lot of clink hammers, obviously, and a lot of anti missile weaponry, but. Not a great deal of point defense. Strategic launch detected. Novak's breaking through over there in the main base. What on earth is Hey Buddy going to do about massive colossal, colossus, colossal spam, colossus spam, which he's going to be facing soon. He hasn't got the weaponry detected. to deal with it. Nuke out though from Hey Buddy. Take a couple of missile ships out. About three of them, I see. Ghost approving of the GC spam. It is going to be quite the shock to Team Two. They must just think that they're team one out of ideas at this point they'll know that there'll be support commanders everywhere they'll see them with a the scrying tool they've been popping the gateways with the mavors and blowing them up as they've stood around so they'll know they'll be facing an enormous economy they'll just be hoping that they can bombard them into submission Feral crack at it, that's for sure. Storm, I have 15 nuke subs building. I need more energy. Take more energy. Yeah, that would be uh, a way to go. All these naval vessels dotted around the place. Seemingly redundant now. 11 GCs operational on the map at this time for turbo. That is a frightening amount of face-based firepower. Three operational nuke launches that I can see now for Hey Buddy, so he's definitely switching it up. To strategic nukes hoping he can maybe clear it out and break out a little bit more start to reclaim some of the map certainly would be the comeback of the century at this point another gateway down but there's just so many everywhere how many support commanders are we up to now, Turbo, I wonder? hundred and eighty-six. 
That is a disgusting amount of support commanderage. Some more support commanderage than my sisters had hot dates. A little bit of counter pressure though, up at the coast here. Fat boy and Colossus, that neither of them are gonna survive, I don't think. But they're gonna kill some of these boats, but they're gonna provoke a response from the seabed. You can see Turbo's Colossus on the move, making their way out. Is this gonna be it, the final attack? In come the horde of broadswords cleaning up the vessels in the bay. Takes no time at all to thin those out. Maybe not. Another nuke out from Hey Buddy. This one going north as they're going after these missile ships down here. Yes, it is. That's going to be a lot of dead missile ships. Look and look, look at that. It's not actually. Only manages to bag two. The other's just out of the way. But you look at that tack missile battery. That's obscene. ASF's tangle above the gunship horde. The ghost nearly through all of them now. And he has a numerical ASF advantage as well. And the GCs are indeed on the move. The gunship's down and out. That would have been the best weapon against these Colossus. But the air advantage was clear. Look at the spam coming down the causeway. All T1, but who cares? Another nuke out from Hey Buddy. That's going over here. It's nuclear point defense time. Trying to slow down the advance of these Colossus as they break out of the waves and head full steam inland. Support commanders throwing up T1 bases. This is Operation Barbarossa in full swing. Nix. The GCs, they're still operational, but they've taken a hit. This one's going to get hit as well. The other one swung south, avoiding what was coming. Now, where are the ACUs? What have they got to get to? So that is Lynn's ACU right at the back there. Hey, buddy, down here in the pile at the main base. So we're going to lose a couple of Colossus out of this, maybe three or four. But still these four down here. We've got another one coming in from the north. Lots and lots of spam coming out of outrageous numbers of T1 factories. Another Colossus back here. More being produced all the time. But this band are going to hit the main bases first. And as we said before, very little in the way of point defense. We've got T3 engineers under shield coverage here, hastily trying to throw down Ravages as quick as they possibly can. But it's all pretty much just artillery-based weaponry under here that was trying to hit back against any fleets or anybody who was trying to set up shop on the beach. They didn't decide to do that in the end because of it. They tried, it didn't work out. And now that base-based firepower that we talked about earlier just tearing through that forward base. This looks pretty dire for Team 2 now as Turbo turns up the heat and just marches mercilessly through Hey Buddy's southeastern position. Huge quantities of ASF chaperoning these Colossus are great costs to themselves from all of these flayers dotted about north and south. But almost all of the Colossus are still turbo. You're an effing champ. Yes, you are. Look at that admiration. It's not easy when you're being stomped on to take a moment to praise your opponent. But that is what Hey Buddy has decided to do. If only we had more like him. 
fat boy inbound. That shield's down. That's going to get roasted anytime soon. Support commanders everywhere trying to throw down triads. Another nuke out from the submarines down here as they try and maneuver. In fact, all of these subs are loaded pretty much, or at least most of them. So we could be out about to see a major nuclear unleashing. SMDs being focused down now. There it goes. Mavors all the way back here, but the primary targets will be the commanders. And hey, buddy, is already moving his comm out to face the inevitable. Inbound nukes all around. That one's going to hurt. Boom, baby! That entire southern portion of Hey Buddy's base is down and out. Hey Buddy gets locked onto the personal shield, evaporates, and so does his health. One hour, 20 minutes almost on the nose. Hey Buddy ousted by Turbo 2, and there is no end in sight. Look at that epic spam rolling in from the north. The ghost coming down the causeway. Nuclear missiles flying in from the subs all over. Mabel still online. Epic amounts of nuke spam. That is absolutely ridiculous. Lots of nukes coming out from Storm up in the north. They're going in after the Mabors. We've got so many SMDs lurking around. to find Lin's comm. There it is. And if the nukes get through, that will take care of him. Maybe. Ah, there it goes. Boom. And that, as they say, at one hour, 21 minutes, more or less, is that. Look how many Colossus are still alive just stomping their way forward that was outrageous absolutely outrageous i'm exhausted uh i honestly thought two mavors you know i know we've got major advantage on territory and everything but two mavors that's going to be hard to contend with but there were just so many support commanders and the bases were so spread out even with that much firepower even with destroying the paragon there was no way back absolutely insane well played to everybody valiant defense hey buddy and lind uh, uh, commiserations but congratulations team one you were pretty epic throughout you shut down the bottom pond nicely great work from ghost breaking through with those vespers to shut down t3 production of lind and help his buddies storm and turbo win the top bond and that was really it when that was done and dusted that was essentially where the game was unretrievable. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. There's always more to come from me in the future. Don't forget, if you feel so inclined, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Donations have been dwindling of late. I really do appreciate each and every one that comes forward. Thank you to everyone that's donated so far and to all of you who are considering doing so in the future. I will keep doing it as long as I possibly can. But until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.